even if I didn't do real estate, I would have still been very rich because I think that I know how to make money. A huge percentage of self-made billionaires in Nigeria became rich through real estate construction and it's easy to justify that with the increasing housing deficit. I've tried to make money in five different countries. Let me count it for you. In the UAE, in the UK, in the US, Nigeria and South Africa. Which, eh? which has been the most it's successful. Been easiest in Nigeria. In Nigeria. We featured a lot of real estate developers on the channel, but Nola Adetola, this guy, seems to be one of the youngest of them all with a very fascinating story. I've always been very ambitious. I came into real estate because I wanted to be rich. I'm only 32, I'll be 33 this year. My first business was registered when I was 17. From selling food, to selling cars, to teaching, you know, a tutorial class. I, I would say that I came from nothing. And I, lived my the first 15 years of my life in a very remote place in Nevada. I kept learning every single year. I've spent more than 400,000 USD on education since I started real estate. In today's episode, he shared his journey in building a multi-billion dollar real estate company in Nigeria, raising billions of naira from the capital market all at a very young age. We are the first real estate company in Africa to actually get international. You, this you can confirm. Wow, okay. Uh, I'll be like Peter. I'll say go and very far. I fine. would go, would go very far now <laughs> go and to very see. Far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good morning, guys. Usually, I start my day, uh, I think I wake up around um, 6 o'clock. When I wake up, I go to pray, you know, because I'm a Muslim. I have to pray and I pray every day and I pray a lot. Weekdays, I have a treadmill upstairs there. And then, you know, I just do like five minutes on the treadmill just to keep fit. And then for there, I look at my schedule for, t uh, for the day. You know, I write a lot. So all of the things that I've previously written in the form of day, I just go through it. Yeah, so more like meditation. So uh, I try to win uh, for the day before I even uh, began the day. Saturday, I go to site. Every Saturday, I go to site. I mean, to check all of our construction works. And then uh, on Sunday, I, I play my favorite game, which is tennis. <laughs> <laughs> So the very first time I stumbled upon your, you as a person before even the business, I think you were listed as 30 under 30. And usually, I usually have this on the back of my mind, like whosoever has been listed on that, like on that category is one, very young, two, is doing well. I mean, I was already doing very well before Forbes <laughs> because Forbes came 2019. But I mean, it gave me the platform. I'm a person of very few words. I don't like words, yeah. but I tell my people, you know what? I want partnerships, I want business, I want money, I want business deals, I don't want awards. Let us know how the journey was from a guy, you know, selling shoes all the way to building one of the most successful real estate companies here in Nigeria. Uh, Veritas is probably like my seventh business. I've said it quite a lot. Yeah, while I was a shoemaker, uh, I wouldn't say I was a field shoemaker. So let's get it, let's get, let's get it right. When you say shoemaker, were you making the shoes yourself? I were you a cobbler? I wasn't a cobbler. What I did was create the system with which shoemaking worked. You know, that that's what everyone, even in real estate, I'm not a bricklayer, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a plumber. Same you know, business model. You know, just same, you know, when so, you say, oh, this one is a real estate developer, it means that you've created um, a system. So when I was making shoes, uh, I think uh, I met a friend of mine, her name was Zina, and then she then introduced me to her brother that was into real estate. He said, look, do this, you'll be rich, very rich. Then you come back to shoemaking and then you do the amount of shoes that you want. I believe that. And then I went into it. And here we are. Mostly I came into real estate because I wanted to be rich. You know, I felt, uh, wow. uh, that's, um... I'm sorry, these are, my interviews are always like this. I'm very, I'm very open, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, it was when I got into real estate, then I then started falling in love with the whole thing, you know, and then later I became very obsessed with it. I had always wanted to do real estate anyway, but I thought that that would be when I'm like advancing, you know, age 40 something, you know, I thought, look, I needed to make a bit more money before I venture into that part of my, because for everything that I have done was like a way to go to the next level, to go to the, you know, from selling food, you know, to selling, uh, our cars, you know, to, um, teaching, you know, a tutorial class. And for all of those chains, I learned a lot, you know, I learned my business lessons which I don't think I would never, ever, ever learn from any business school because I've gone to top business schools around the world. Okay, so what was the what was the core purpose of being a real estate entrepreneur or was it just, I just want to use this, get rich? When we were selling, however, I discovered a lot of things because I started from marketing real estate, you know, yeah. problems on, on delivery, quality of construction and the speed of delivery as well. Look, the Nigerian system, however, is not built 
for normal people apart from when you're a business owner or a politician to yeah. own real estate yeah. and then we thought that we could solve a bit of that problem maybe not all a bit and then we thought that there was like a huge gap between people that own real estate and people that own, you know most people that buy again they are not debutants they are not people that are buying for the first time that people that own real estate before we want new people to buy real estate you know and this is one of the reasons why I, I went into real estate this is come out with advantage too i mean all i can see is this is like how many floors five or four floors five floors this is g plus five. one two three four five yeah and all together what are the unit types that we have on here two bedroom all true to the painters yeah those are three bedrooms and a few minutes in it, uh, when we launched this, we sold at 40, then we sold at 44. So the 44 was after how many months? Uh, 44 was like, you know, when we saw that we were selling so much at 30, 40, then we quickly put it to 44, but it was sold out quickly. But now, people that we sold to, we're selling at 72. What? And this is less than two years. Eh? So let's go inside, take a look at one of the, what one of the unit looks like. Oh, nice. The door feels very heavy. So this is a smart door lock. Does it come with all the units? Correct. Right. Uh, yeah, it comes with all the units. I mean, we want to make our houses as smart as smart as possible, right? Okay. So this is a, your show unit for what the two bedroom? Yeah, two bedroom apartment. You have a space. Um, this is the living room. Yeah. The guest toilet is on there and has a balcony, the dining and the kitchen. So you can step back. I'll just take them on a quick tour. Um, this is the kitchen. Nice, you know, countertop, your industrial sink on there, and then this door takes you outside. It comes with your microwave, your oven, and an extractor. Cabinetry has like lighting in it, which is also very nice. Obviously, well laid out because the kitchen leads you right into the dining for about four, five, six people. The living room is right here, and this area takes you to the rooms, right? This is the first room on here, and I'm just going to take you to the primary bedroom. You have a, a bigger bed, a king size bed on here, right? It's really big, uh, massive windows all around, and you have like a mini walk in closet on this other end. The bathroom here, it just has a standing shower and a WC. Honestly, for this part of town, Ikate, I'll tell you, the apartment is decently sized. You can play around with your, your, with your interior to even give you more space, but let me know what you guys think. You're one of the very few young people out there that has built a very successful real estate company in a short period of time so what would you say you did right and what would you say you did wrong the way you get to actually in life is as a result of the wrong and the right decisions that you have you know made we do things wrong every time every year sometimes how we develop you know how we approach projects you know from not checking titles of uh, development running into problems and trying to correct it and spending way more millions of naira you know from not planning the finance very well and not making a lot of profit on projects. But talking about what we've done very right, a lot of things. When we wanted to start Veritas, we we brought in people that uh, were very loyal to the brand that could kill or do anything for the brand than people that were smart. And then, you know, the consistency, you know, the doggedness, the, uh, you know, we challenged the status quo. Uh, we, we believed in our beliefs. You know, and then uh, when people were saying, no, we can't be done, you are just 26, you know, how can you do this? How you do, you know, real estate? I'll tell you, my first business, I still have the registration. If this interview was done in my house, I would have shown you because I still have it. Uh, my first business was registered when I was 17. Imagine, would you then say that, let's say a 56 year old guy yeah. that started his first business when he was 40, yeah. would you say that he got successful too early or too, for too young or something? Another thing that I think that we did right was um, signing good partnerships. You know, we partner with one of the uh, biggest real estate brokers in Africa. I'm sure you know them, BRG, and then some real estate millionaires, and, you know, and then, you know, that came out very good. I kept learning every single year. I've spent more than 400,000 USD on education. Every year I go back to school, and even if it's just um, some two or three weeks course, I do you know and in like not just any school not like the top business school all around the world i invest in myself i think that uh, if you're leading uh, a group of very smart hardworking people you need to be always one or two step ahead and then being very financial uh, fi financial intelligent running a business in nigeria has it limited you in any way yeah maybe government policies the inflation rapid inflation inflation happens everywhere but it's, it's pretty rapid in nigeria 
and then maybe the uh, fluctuation and very the volatility of our current our local currency but trust me i'll tell you something today i've tried to make money in five different countries let me count it for you in the uae in the uk in the us nigeria and south africa which, eh? which has been the most it's successful been easiest in nigeria, in nigeria. Not only me, I've sampled a lot of people, you know. Would you would you say because of our population size? Population size is one of the factors. Look, anywhere, when you go to a place that they have a lot of problems and they have big, very big population like India, like China, and yeah. a lot of them are people below, you know, living below average standard, yeah. it's easier to get money from them, easier to convince to actually party with, with their money. While you were a bit young, probably in your 26, 27, did you ever thought of relocating at some point because it's a trend right now the whole japan movement like everyone is going out there searching for new opportunities what really made we were you the one that started japan <laughs> <laughs> we're the one that started japan so, I why, think so was, why didn't you leave they didn't give me a visa now what which which uh, <laughs> united states can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> and i almost committed <laughs> I was so, so that sad. was the, like if you were going to get that visa you were never going to come back again I'll, I'll tell you because look i've always been very ambitious right I was like probably in my uh, final year in school. I had test plans. I had a lot of business ideas yeah. written down. I only felt I could achieve those in the United States of America. You know, I didn't think that there was any of. I wanted to leave Ife and go to Yankee Street. The grass is greener there, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Look, one of the things that these countries also do for themselves, they are very good PR out there. You know, they sell the. Dubai is excellent at that. Uh, they know how to sell their country perfectly you know? and they control media really well. Thank you. Do you consider yourself to be self-made? So I'll tell you what I think, right? I, I think that there is no self-made anybody. Let, let, let me come from my direction, right? I, I would say that I came from nothing. You know, I, I mean, I lived my the first 15 years of my life, you know, in Nevada, in a very remote place in Nevada. And then uh, I read the book then and, you know, uh, I mean, the book told me that, look, you can actually do anything that you want to do. You can become anything that you want to become. We decided to work for it. So if you if it's that's what you call self-made, yeah, maybe. But for me, I think that uh, uh, I, I've had a bit of luck too, you know. The universe has presented me opportunities that they've probably not really presented a lot of people, you know. Maybe I was able to take it because I was prepared. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people around me that's of me that have made me that have made us as very touchy. so in that sense i might not say that i'm self-made i've done it but i've done it with the help of a lot of others as well. yeah itino residential what what inspired the name itino means peace and comfort what was the idea having like uh, a basketball and a tennis court good. outside of the estate good i just thought look this place is going to be very well secured not just anybody can get an entrance however there are a lot of people that want to have fun in it you that are not resident, they should be able to have fun. Mm -hmm. How do they have fun? Outside. They come, they show something, something, they go into the court, they play, yeah. they have fun and they get away. Simple. So something that I feel is very unique about the project is the accessibility to the road, right? Like, as you guys can see, what is this road? What is the road called? It's called Lake Ekwe Expressway. Oh, this is still Lake Ekwe? Yeah, correct. Well, wow. That's so, Ekwe just there, not far. Why did you pick this area for this project? Most of our projects are very accessible, good locations. Before we think that when you get the location right in real estate, yeah, but you've done like half of the, half of the work half already, of the work right? Already. Yeah. The overall reason why we chose this lo location is because of the amount of industrialization that is happening in this environment. So when we uh, wanted to site the siting service, we were given uh, option of a leco, there are stuff and the, you know, also option of air. But we chose this place. We thought, look, look at the airport, the new airport. Yeah. Look at the new seaport just across us. Look at the refinery. Look at the free trade zone. You know, one of the things is as you, that you have to do as a real estate person when you go into a space or a state. You know, you have to know the master plan, the government plan for that area. You know, and so we were opportunity opportune to know the plan. plans of the government in this area. And then, like I told you, we are building, we have an ambitious project to build 1,000 units of houses. 1,000 units? Yeah. There, there's a project that we've done that when I, whenever I get there, I'm proud. I'm also very proud of myself. Yeah. Right? We're young, we're vibrant, we're, we're, you know, we're very smart. We're affecting the economy. We're not stealing from the economy. We're adding to it. Value to we're it, making right. our money 
a very legal way you know we're paying our taxes when was uh Veritasi, the company created yeah so we officially started our development um in 2017 however we've been running our marketing um way before then how many homes have you delivered we've delivered so 200 plus homes 200 plus homes wow in how many locations in uh four different locations we have another four locations being built if we complete that that would it will be nearing uh 600 homes that would, would have delivered wow. would you be willing to share um, with us how much your company is worth in 2023 uh, well, are you sure the, the tax people will not come for me? <laughs> uh, I would say that for, for a six year old company, uh, the only industry that, I, that I, I think I've seen the kind of numbers that we've done is tech, you know, in terms of valuation. Okay, so in April this year, your company signed a commercial paper program once again. Uh, 10, that was like 10 billion naira. So, not so many real estate companies would get such an opportunity. So how are you able to position yourself to get that opportunity and what does such funding does for your business? Oh, okay. So the, when we went to the capital market to raise money, a lot of people didn't think it was possible because look, this, the kind of company that going to the capital market are the dangotes, the emptiness, the supply. You know, we went for rating. We're not even trying to raise money from the capital market because of course, whenever we needed money, the banks are willing to give us money because they think that we're very believable and credible. And we got rated and we saw that, look, the SEC licensed resting agency in Nigeria was saying that this is one of the best real estate companies that exists in Nigeria from what they sent to us with rating. You know, you can't even influence it. And I still have the rating report. And they're saying that, look, liquidity is wonderful, great management, corporate governance is top notch. Instead of raising money from the bank at 20 something percent, let's go and raise uh, cheap, cheaper money. And then we raised money at 14. You know, we went and then at fourteen percent coupon, and then we went and we went to do a project with it, and then we made profit, and then we returned the money. You know, we returned the money even before it was due to return. And then now, because we we did that, a lot of people, a lot of investors want to do more business with us. For me, I see this as an indicator of a very strong brand that we're building. A lot of brands don't get to do all of this in six years or five years. You know, if you were offered a thousand dollars now. Mm, mm and everything you know about real estate mm. investing how to make money remains mm. in your head but mm. all your physical assets mm. and money goes away mm. what systems would you put in place or what would you do to build a company a successful company in the fastest you know pace possible another real estate company yeah to be let me tell you all right i don't even need to be offered one thousand dollars i mean you need money to buy airtime and internet internet when i say nothing okay no shingbai in your account okay maybe look maybe airtime <laughs> to be honest i really do not want i don't even need the internet maybe airtime because look this is how i start this i have airtime right i'll call my people in the mtn i'll do a deal with them they will give me unlimited internet <laughs> and if i have internet don't worry i'll solve my problems you know because you, you have to know how to use people the problem is if only me use you every time if i'm using you i'm always using steve i'm always steve i'm not allowing myself to be used by steven that's what's bad but if i use you you use me i use you that's value right i know how to use people and i know how to submit myself to be used by people yeah. if you know that if you understand that one number one in like six months you get back to at least a decent stage because i know how to uh, you know tell people what i want i know how to negotiate okay this is what i want to do for me this is what i'll do for you in return so first of all i'll use my what human capital or what or yeah the, human capital uh, you know to get one or two things right and then let me tell you something hmm? i'm only 32 i'll be 33 this year but i can tell you that i have impacted and built a lot of people i would not lack money i've always said you know the bankers the finance people and the media people are, to me are like some of the most important you know if you have a bad the, product, the, the media people give you the exposure the banks give you money to go build this that's really smart guys <laughs> And I'll be able to do Veritas back in two, 20 half years. If you own the bank, yeah. right? or you have very huge shares in the bank, or you are very influential in the bank, and then you own a media station that's very relevant, you can sell anything and you can build any kind of business. 
you can make anything yeah, out this is literally this, this is the greatest takeaway of this video guys <laughs> if, you, if you really ask me i'll take this part and put it in the beginning but honestly that that makes total sense okay i have two more questions before you go the first question is just tell us about all the projects that you've built both the ones that have been completed and not completed and just a basic run through of like what your company has built great so we have the campbell cut one in abidjo cut two you've been to cut yeah. two i think i've been uh, to everywhere guys yeah yeah we have advantage one, two, three, four. We are launching five soon. We are launching a lot of advantages because people see advantage in them. You know, it's one, of, it's, <laughs> it's one of the greatest projects around. You know, in this lucky corridor. You yeah. know, because I mean, sometimes at foundation stage we are sold out. And especially advantage four, I think we we got sold out at foundation. You know, you know, uh, almost uh, seventy something unit of apartment. You know. Uh, court one and court two is a lot of projects in a lot of houses, but we managed to deliver both. We just delivered court two, I think, on Saturday, this last Saturday. Yeah, Advantage one and two was delivered, I think, November last year. We also have site and service projects. You know, we have um, it's no residential. We have the city. Uh, both of them jointly more than two thousand plots. Uh, you know, and we're fixing the infrastructure every day. We're not stopping. And the plan for that estate is nice. It's wonderful. Yeah, and a lot of other things to be honest. So that's the it's no it's no residential, however, it's mainly residential, you know, building clusters. We're starting that one to this, I think around May after the election. Before those two projects we've done, you know, the Claridge project that's in the uh that that was sold a bit cheaper. So we might not be able to achieve the kind of infrastructure that we achieved in it, you know. And then you know, a lot of we've been doing projects since year 2017. This year we're doing the it's no residential cluster B. We're doing the Campbell Advantage Five. We're doing something in Banana Island. I'll let you guys know which of these projects are selling in the description. So just in case you want to, you know, you like him <laughs> and you and you believe in the vision of Veritasi, you want to invest, you go look it up on there. So this is a lighting round. I'm just gonna ask you a random question quickly. So let's go. Um, what's your favorite city? Has to be Dubai. Dubai, yeah, I think everybody, <laughs> every real estate person just loves Dubai, right? Oh, uh, well, because uh, I, I know 70% of the people I ask, they all want Dubai. Okay, favorite car, ask me my G class now. It used to be my uh, uh <laughs> my Porsche, but uh, I yeah. mean, I have a problem with it. Yeah, are but you forgetting you own a Bentley? I don't, I, I don't like Bentleys like that. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> imagine I buy a car and I'll be like, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite food? Fries, jello fries. Interesting. Favorite designer clothes or watch or any designers? Person? I love watches. Patek Philippe. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Favorite quote? There's one that uh, Robert said that actually changed my life. I yeah. Mean, I don't want people to take it literally. But yeah. He said that if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. <laughs> But here you are taking <laughs> courses and lectures See, look, everywhere. Look, okay, look, it's like different. Said, if you want to be rich and happy, too, not just rich. If you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. Everybody should figure out the meaning themselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Favorite book? Favorite book in recent time. I read Money by Tony Robbins. Okay. I think that changed a lot of things for me. Uh, increased my financial intelligence, and I've been able to take super good decision financially since then. Person, like who do you look up to in the world? Uh, <laughs> people have problem with who I look up to. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be Robert Kiyosaki and Donald Trump. Wow. Okay. <laughs> do you think Donald Trump is going to win the? Because I know he's running again for what year is it? If he gets the ticket, he will win. He knows how to win. I learned winning from him right yeah all of viewers and everybody on youtube and instagram everybody. and twitter everybody i can tell you i'm not a social person <laughs> it's not it's not an internet person <laughs> at all. i want you to please subscribe to steve and the cool youtube channel great content please subscribe i'm i'm subscribing to we're going, we're going to we're going to 10 countries this year starting from friday this friday oh really yeah Oh, nice. So it's going to be very interesting here. Great, great. I mean, I've gone to a few countries because of what I've seen on YouTube. For real? Yeah. That's really nice. I've so content creators will change the world. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you people are doing wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wonderful. Uh, All right. Thank you guys so much. I hope this video was really interesting. So subscribe to the channel, Travel Real Estate, stories about entrepreneurs in Africa. Um, those are the kind of videos you're going to be seeing throughout the year. So um, until the next video, I'll see you guys soon.